And I was just like, dude, it's different. He, he was he was savage at this shit. He scored 63 points on me in three quarters. His eyes, yo, his eyes were so, he was so intense. Yeah, no, nah, there's no scouting report for Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant is one of the most unguardable players in NBA history. And personally, I rank him among my top four in that category. Jordan, Shaq, and Will are the only people ahead of him. What made Kobe so unstoppable to me was that he took Michael Jordan's game, added moves that Jordan didn't intend to do, and perfected his post-game footwork. He made it his exclusive style. Kobe's greatest ability was the willingness to adapt to any defense. It was honestly second to none. Kobe can find any way to make that shot over you. It can be the most extreme situation where he has to shoot a left-handed three-pointer in the corner. And yes, he did that. And that's where Kobe's game separates from everyone else. He's willing to take shots that no other player would even consider. Without a doubt, Kobe is the best tough shot maker in NBA history. And Kobe's ability to score wasn't just about his physical skills, but also mental. His psychological warfare on the court, called Mamba mentality, was about outthinking and outworking his opponents at every turn. This tenacity and killer instinct made him a monster on the court, especially when the game was on the line. So I'm going to show you a mix of NBA legends and players who share what made Kobe Bryant unstoppable. And they're also going to talk about what it took for him to get to that level of being unguardable. So enjoy the video, man. The first I met Kobe, Kobe was just out of high school. He was out here for a workout and I've never seen anyone work out as hard <laughs> it's Kobe. I've never seen anybody that prepared. He was 17 years old and was ready to play NBA basketball. That's uh, that's pretty amazing. I think Jerry West was the one who said this. He said, I want this kid because this kid has more talent than anybody I have playing for me right now. <laughs> and he had a great team. Just <laughs> a kid who would never take a night off. Even if it wasn't going well, it was always going to be trying to uh, to slay the dragon. If you don't have that type of work ethic, uh, you don't get to enjoy the benefits. Out to Kobe. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. What a way to finish! Killer instincts is not the confidence in yourself. I can make this shot against anybody. I can make this play. You want to win. There's extra, extra pressure to play for a team that is expected to win, but that's an incentive that most athletes uh, enjoy. Uh, they want to prove to everybody that they can deliver. 81 points for Kobe. It's the most points scored by one individual in the game since Will Chamberlain. They call him the Black Mamba. I mean, man, deadly. He was just, to me, <laughs> one of the greatest ball players I've ever seen to be play basketball. I never told the story. We was in Charlotte, and we was in the huddle, and... He was like, uh, the game was tied. It was only like four seconds, three seconds on the shot clock. And, um, you know, Rudy T is like drawing up all type of shit on the board. <laughs> and he swiped it off again. And he, Kobe said, fuck that. Just give me the ball right here. <laughs> and uh, he was like, whoever want to take the ball out going to be part of history. <laughs> and uh, Lamar was like, I want to be part I'll of history. I'll go grab the ball. <laughs> All right, give me the ball. He threw that shit in, man. <laughs> Kobe hit the shot, blouse this game. It was just <laughs> like. I was like, I looked at him, he was just like, like winked his eye in the moment, like, yo, just whoever want to be a part of history, just throw the ball in. This shit's <laughs> over. Kobe takes the ball to the basket. Kobe's got it near midcourt. Five seconds remaining. Working off the dribble. Pump the Kobe again. But that was, that was him. Like, right. that was just who he was. And he, OG was different, man. He was different. KG, Kobe was way different. He's a different kid. You know what I'm saying? It was I was in Shout ten man, years. Man. I was in ten years more and plus in the NBA at the time, and that's when we were in the 2000s. Yeah. It was like my tenth or my eleventh year in the, yeah. in the league, yeah. and Kobe didn't have a fear of nothing to ask nobody to get better. Thanks. So he came by me and he was like, "Big bro, man, you be doing this and that and that. I really want to learn this, man. I really want to learn it because of you." And when he said that, that took something out of me and took something in my heart that a kid with his ability and knowing where he was going mm -hmm. wants to really learn and he doesn't have an ego. Right. He doesn't have an ego. And I don't mind that. I don't care about him knowing how to do it and stop it because if he knows it, it makes me better too. KG, because I got to learn how to stop him now. Because mm. I gave him the game, Facts. so I got to learn how to be somewhere else doing, just showing something else. Facts. And it didn't really bother me. 
And I watched him in the series in Utah where he shot like the, the air balls. Mm-hmm. He shot the air balls. He had this, he had it. I mean, and if it, anybody know Kobe, he did everything like Mike. Mm-hmm. The fadeaway, the tongue, he, he went ball. When that didn't work the first year, he was like, you know what, I'm finna be my fucking self. So he grew his hair out, he started rhyming, he was rhyming in mm-hmm. Italian. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You now you start to get to see a little more of the personality. Yeah. You know, he came out with his first shoe, and you know, now seeing him with the hair, he was a different cat. And then we used to, you know, the thing was, in, in the summertime, everybody used to go to L.A. to go to UCLA and play. And that's when we go to uh, UCLA, and I saw him in UCLA, he looked totally different. Yeah, hit the weights, mm-hmm. dunking that motherfucker, talking shit. Uh, I mean, he was dunking on bigs. He was he was just a different cat from when I seen him. You know what I'm saying? I just saw I just saw him turn into this this animal. <laughs> Real shit. But he we was, was both young and just trying to get it. You know, fighting for us. His quickness and agility and ability to get his jump shot off from anywhere. You had to respect that. He, he he was an issue for the defense. Well, I think the Black Mamba is appropriate. He makes shots with guys draped all over him. You know, falling down left hand or right hand. I just, you know, witnessed him doing some amazing things. The Lakers are champion back-to-back titles. The LA Lakers, the 2010 NBA champions. When you're able to go all the way to the top, uh, you, you feel that you put your name in granite, more or less. The ecstasy of winning it all and being the best player on the planet uh, for his tenure. I go to Los Angeles. I'm with Kobe, first day, press conference. He signs like a hundred and 36 million dollars. Never seen no shit like that before. So I'm like, wow, this is crazy. And the second he signed it, he's like, uh, you ready to fucking blackout? And I was like, what, what is, what, what is a blackout? He's like, we about to fucking blackout, be here at 7 a.m. tomorrow. And I was like, damn, blackout, 7 a.m. tomorrow. And the next day we started working out and I, realize what a blackout workout was. It was like you're getting your reps in, you're getting 50 shots from each spot, 100 makes off the move, you're getting all this shit, then you get so tired, you see spots, you blacking out. <laughs> and that was a blackout. And then guess what, you know, I gotta tell you the rest. So after that first workout, and you do ones at the end, you go get you something to eat, you take about three, four hours to yourself, and you come back. And you black out again. Oh my god! And we did this literally from free agency was always what the second first week of July. We did that shit all the way to training camp. And you know every city we went in two in the morning, three in the morning. He had high schools rented out to go shoot, like fresh from the airport. Take him to a place where he can get his shots up to four in the morning. Then he comes in the hotel and he never missed a film session. And it was just. I saw it at a different level, and I was just like, bro, he's different. And my rookie year, young boy, no? my rookie year, here I am again, Duke boy. You know, I got him. I, I got Kobe. I got him. I got him. I got him. Yeah. I got him. All right. And so I learned what, what Kobe Island is. Kobe Island is when you're guarding Kobe Bryant, you turn around, and you've got no help to that defense. You're on yeah. an island. Yeah. <laughs> it's an only place to be. Trust me. This yeah. cat, and I didn't know how to guard like I would later on, he scored 63 points on me in three quarters. Mm. I mean, the Lakers are good. They're beating our, beating our, beating us so bad that he didn't even play the fourth quarter. He for sure would have had eighty, for sure, mm. without a doubt. Out of everything you studied on him and everything, what made you decide that like I'm just gonna take away his vision? <laughs> like, you know, why I did that. Yeah. It's not for reasons people thought. So I knew statistically what Kobe's worst shot was, and it was a shot off the bounce. Okay, he took a lot of long twos off yeah. off the dribble. Okay, that's like he's like a 42% shooter, okay, which is below league average, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, what makes him legendary is finishing, follow ability, you know, follow drawings, three throws, actually, decent three point shooter, but off the bounce was his worst shot. And so I said to myself, the only chance I have against this guy is to to try to make him take as many dribble jump shots as I can, Mm -hmm. okay. So when I started sticking my hand in the face, I also knew Kobe had a bigger ego than anybody. Mm -hmm. And he would go out of his way to show that the hand in the face- Don't matter. It it don't matter, it it Mm -hmm. doesn't affect me. What's the only way that he can prove to me that this doesn't work? Let you do it and just keep on doing (laughs) it. The shot off the bounce. Yeah. So he was doing me a favor by trying to prove me wrong that my theory didn't work, which I was more than happy to let him try to do. I didn't have a strategy for Kobe. Like, I, didn't, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> and so sometimes, man, like, I would just, 
he go up and shot. I'm just hit his arm, like just hit his yeah. arm and just like you know. And the problem too was I, I couldn't go back at him because mm -hmm. that my role, you know, in, in Phoenix, Nash had the ball in his hand, so I'm stuck in the corner and and I'm not, you know, I'm not a spot up shooter. Um, so he was hard to defend. But in that moment, man, like I, I mean, a couple times I guess right, like I'm like, like he's gonna go right, he's gonna shot fake. I'm not, you know, I know what he's gonna do. And I'm like, and then, you know, you know how hard so it you're is. You're saying this, and you're, when you were squared off against him, you're saying that in your head as your de uh, as your defense. I knew, I knew he wanted to go right, mm -hmm. and I knew he had a great ball fake, mm -hmm. and I I've seen him do it before, and so he Too many that times. one shot right in front of our bench mm -hmm. when he tapped Alvin on the, and so he hit a tough shot on me before that, and I tried to deny him the ball, but he gets it, he goes right, I go with him, he shot fakes, I don't go for it. I actually, I get closer into him. I go up when he goes up. You know how hard it is to do a shot fake, reload from three? And somebody in your group. And I'm, I'm, I, I couldn't be any closer to him without fouling him. Man, this dude hits mm. me. Like, I was like, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I was actually proud of the defense I played. Right. Yeah. Like, I'm Long thinking, like, I couldn't have done anything other than just prevent him from getting the ball, but. He was the best player I played against. Uh -huh. and, and, and I say this respectfully with Jordan. I didn't guard Jordan. Pippen mm -hmm. and I matched up. Yeah. But the, the best player that I, I played against, hands down, was Kobe. There's a lot of ways that we saw the league. Uh, Kobe is probably a little more um, enthusiast on the detailing and tangibles when it comes mm -hmm. to uh, both sides of the ball. He had a way right. that he was trying to uh, really corner and really put his thoughts and the way he saw the game in, in his box, he was trying to put it in his own lane, which was the mama mentality. And then, um, you know, uh, a lot of people don't really understand that when he started, um, you know, the league, he came off like a selfish player. And it took years for people to really understand that this kid wants to be great and he was going at it the way he saw it. And surely but surely, it, it started to, you know, resonate and it started to transcend into something great. And then, mm -hmm. um, yeah, next thing I know, he was, he was, he was bigger than life, but he mm -hmm. was still that same kid that I had met in Philly. He was that still, still that same, that same uh, leader, that same champion at heart. He wanted it so bad. And then, too, let's just keep it real, man. Kobe saw this shit the same way I saw it. Killed yes, to be he did. killed. He, he, was, he was savage at this shit. I've been on the wrong end of playing him on the biggest stage, playing him in the finals. Uh, Western Conference Finals. <laughs> There's not one single defense or not one, not two coverages that you can put. It just, you gotta try to make it tough as possible. Do your work early. Make him catch the ball in where you want him to catch it. But and instead of two dribbles, you might have to take three. You might, it's in, instead of, it, it, it's just certain things you need to do early and do your work early. And yeah, that was just main thing, man. Like, cause you know what he's, what he's capable of doing. So instead of 40, then you probably let's try to keep that to like 29, <laughs> right? Yeah. If you can. But no, it, it was there was no yeah, there's no scouting report for Kobe Bryant. Because in he's worked on all deficiencies. Mm -hmm. So anything that you could try to force him to do, I gotta counter for that. Okay, you wanna take that away, I gotta counter for that. And you take this out, okay, this is what I've been working on. It just He's proved it with the whole clip, him shooting left hand fadeaways and turn around jumpers. Like there's no, they thought he was fucking gonna go out of the game. <laughs> right? Oh, we up 20, oh, he gonna go out of the game, we gonna win. No, joke's on you. <laughs> joke's on you. <laughs> right? You know, he said in his book, look, no, like no one, could, no one could stop me essentially. And I had great muscle memory that the hand in the face trick that Shane used to do, it just, it just didn't work. All right, it, it worked a little bit. <laughs> um, but, he said something really funny. He said, um, Shane always downplayed his ability to play against me. And um, I saw that as false humility and I attacked him because of it. Hmm. And I'm like, he's right. Right, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. So that, like for Kobe, that was the, the game within the game, the, within the game that we played with each other. Like, it was exactly. like a meta game. That, like exactly. no one else knew we were playing. This mind game that yeah. he knew I was, I was, you know, downplaying everything, and I knew that he thought he was he had no weakness. Mm -hmm. And it like so like, I never had that with anybody in basketball. When he pump fakes, I, I'm not gonna block the shot. I'm gonna just stab right here, make him pump fake like this and he just said I need to just throw all, throw off his rhythm on 
how he shoots the ball. I'm not going to stop him. I'm not going to block him. He's going to, he has every move. But usually when you see him pump fake and he's, uh, 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 realize everybody's sitting there like this. Let me smack, put my arm there so he has to move the rotation. So if he decides to come up, he's going to have to come up like this. Which he said eventually he developed that shit. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he said right. eventually he developed that one where right. you know I'm sitting, he's sitting here doing this, and then you know people God kept damn. stabbing. Now he's like, all right, to me, and then started shooting like God that. Damn. But you know the scouting report is coming from people who just watching film, they're not watching players because there's a lot of players in this league. If you understood what a how a player played then you will realize how bad your scouting report is because your scouting report is coming from something that has nothing to do with the actual game. So I think it's our, it's our first year after we had the scare in Portland, but now we're in the finals. I file out. Refs is, yeah, refs is bullshit in Indiana. I'm nervous because I'm like, fuck, if we don't win, I already know it's coming here. We up three, they tie this, we're going to be in trouble. Everybody's panicking on the bench and Kobe goes, I'm like, and he whispers, I got you, big dog. That's what he says. I got you, big dog. Yeah, in that little five, six minutes, I'm, I'm on the bench like, like, I knew he was nice, but I'm like, damn. He went crazy. Yeah, he went crazy. And then I, I just, look, I got the press card and said, this is the best player in the world. <laughs> yes. No, he, he really is. Like, it, any motherfucker that's going to tell you they're going to, like, Mike was like that. But anybody that's going to say, watch this, and they do it. And he was like that. Like when, like, like his rookie year, he used to be practicing moves without the ball and shoot around because he didn't start, so he'd be in the corner like. <laughs> yeah, no, no. That's what motherfucker did be. Like he shoot, he motherfucker get his elbow. Like that. He did. He he was doing all that, and people thought he was crazy. But you know, when they talk about that first in the gym and last league, that was him. He worked out like that. Like he, he really wanted to be the best. So you can see the amount of work and pain that Kobe had to go through to reach that level of greatness. Just from listening to these players, he was really an assassin on the court the way he worked on his craft. So tell me, what is your favorite Kobe clip here and your top three most unguardable NBA players? So make sure you like, share, subscribe, and until next time.